Okay, we're back. So today we're going to learn about velocity and acceleration. And um, specifically, we're going to look at two different uh, types of motion in physics. The first one is constant velocity. Now, constant velocity, let's go back to the definition of velocity, and we'll say that velocity is the rate of change of position with respect to time. So we've, uh, we've learned this definition before, but in terms of an equation, it would be velocity is equal to the rate of change. Now, rate of change is always with respect to time. And change in position is delta d. And so we have this equation for constant velocity. And we can now rearrange this, solving for delta d here. We can multiply both sides by delta t and get v. And now I'm not going to write delta t here, although I could. but in physics, delta t is always, or I should say, t is always assumed to be delta t. We never deal with time of day in physics. So if I was to rewrite this equation, d equals vt, it is understood that the t there, in fact, is elapsed time. So, uh, the t is definitely not time of day. So in essence, what I'm saying is it's unnecessary to put delta t. However, delta d, no, that one's a little different. We need to be specific there. And we've learned already that, I'll put it up here, that delta d is equal to df minus di, where f and i stand for final and initial. In fact, any delta variable is final minus initial. That's just the nature of change. So whenever you see this delta triangle character, essentially it means change. That's what this guy is. Okay. So in this case, delta D uh, is displacement. Okay, um, we can now expand the delta D here, and we can say it's df minus di equals vt. And then we can write down df as final position is equal to uh, vt plus di. And so here we have an equation for constant velocity. OK, so now that we have this equation for constant velocity, um, let's try and write the particle model or draw the particle model. And essentially what the particle model is, is we're taking photographs of the object. And I'm going to represent the object as dots. And we've already learned that the dots would be at constant or equal intervals away from each other. In other words, the distance between the dots is not increasing and it's not decreasing. And the important thing about the particle model, this is like the particle model, is that the time between any successive photograph. So once again, what are these dots? They're superimposed photographs and the dot representing the location of the object over multiple photographs which are taken at constant time intervals. So for example, in this case, we might say that the time interval of each photo is uh, one second. Okay, um, 
And so that's true for all of these. Each of these, each of these time intervals are one second. And since the distance between each point is equivalent, that represents constant velocity. Okay, let's take a look at the graphing motion of this. If I have the equation df equals vt plus di, this is the same as y equals mx plus b, where v is the slope. So if I was to draw the graph of this as an example, and I was to have this point be 10, and this point, let's say, be 2, and this is my d in meters, and this is my time in seconds, then I know that the slope of this graph is 10 divided by 2, so my equation would be df equals 10 divided by 2, which is 5, t, and of course now I could say plus 0 because it goes through the origin here, and that's, my, that's the equation of, um, of this particular line. I could do another one where it doesn't go through the origin like this. And for example, I could say, hey, uh, what if this was a 2? And let's say this was a 12. OK? And this was a 5. Now, you see, my slope is going to be 12 minus 2, right? over 5 minus 0. There's a 0. So that's going to be 10 divided by 5, which is going to be equal to 2. So my equation for this one would be df equals a slope of 2, and then t, and then plus another 2, which would represent this location, because that's the vertical intercept. So you could see we can cr write straight line equations, but they all have, they're all straight lines. Of course, the slopes don't have to be positive. We could also have negative slopes as well. But there is another type of straight line which I want to discuss with you. And let's kind of do that now. Let's make some more room here. And that would be a situation like this where we had d in meters and t in seconds. And in this case, we would have a horizontal line, let's say, at 6. Now, in this case, if I wrote the equation, the slope of this line is 0. So, so this v is a 0, so this term disappears, and it just becomes df equals 6, where the intercept is 6. Now, is that constant velocity? Yes, it is. It's 0 velocity. So essentially, the object is not moving. We would say the object is at rest. Now, we can combine this. We can combine at rest with constant velocity. Um, but before we do, let's also take a look at a situation where we have uh, a negative. So let's take a look at this graph here that has a negative slope. In this case, um, it starts at 15 meters. This is again distance or position and time. And so if we get the slope of this line, be careful here because it's final minus initial. So vertically, our final position is 0 minus our initial position, which is 15. This gives us negative 15. And then our time final is 3, our initial is 0, 
So we're going to get negative 5 for our slope. So we can write the equation now, negative 5t. And now we can say plus, and now the vertical intercept is 15. So this would be the equation of this line. So essentially now, we have done uh, both the positive slope, the negative slope, and a zero slope. And we know how to write the equations for all three of them. So what if we now, essentially, what if we did a combination? So let's take a motion that looks like this, like this, and, um, and let's finish it off and let's go like that. Now we need some numbers here. So um, we could start off with the same numbers. We could say this is, let's say, 15. And we could say this is 3 seconds. Let's say this is another 3 seconds. So this would be 6 seconds. And let's say this is another 3 seconds. And so this would be 9 seconds. So the slope here on this first section, we'll call this sections A, B, C. So we know the velocity in each, sec in each section. That doesn't look like an A. There we go. The velocity here is positive 5 meters per second. The velocity here is 0, because the slope is 0. And the velocity here is equal to negative 5 meters per second. OK? Now, let's. the reason why I did this example here is because I want to show you the difference between instantaneous velocity or instantaneous velocity and average velocity. So if someone was to say, what is the velocity at 1.5 seconds? Okay, so what if the question said, what is the velocity at 1.5 seconds, question mark. Well, the answer, that's easy. The answer would be positive 5 meters per second. Why? Because at 1.5 seconds right here, if we go up, we see that at that point in time, the slope of this graph is at 5 meters per second. So it's not, remember, it's not the position. It's not the location. It's, it's the velocity. Now we could say at 1.5 seconds, where is it? And that's pretty easy, right? If we use the equation df equals vt plus di, in this case, di is 0. And we have df equals 5t. Well, if t is 1.5, that's going to give us 7.5. So that means at this point, we're at 7.5 meters. That's our current location at, at 1.5 seconds. Um, but our velocity at 1.5 seconds is 5 meters per second. Now if we ask the question, hey, uh, what is our velocity at, let's say, uh, 4 seconds? Well, we know that the velocity at 4 seconds, v at 4 seconds, is equal to 0 meters per second. Because at 4, which is about there, we can see that we're right there. And our slope at that point in time is 0. 
Now, the next thing you got to say, ask is, what's our location at that time? Now, in this case, we cannot use we cannot use the equation of this line. What we need to do is we need to figure out, hey, how far has this thing gone up till this point? Because after this point, it doesn't move anymore, right? So this is a really easy problem to solve because at this point, if you want to know the position, this is D. We just go to the left and we say, hey, at that point, it's at 15 meters. Okay? We could say at 15 meters at 4 seconds. Then it continues to stay at 15 meters for another 2 seconds after 4 until 6 seconds. And then it starts moving backwards at the same velocity for another three seconds until it gets back to the origin after nine seconds. You guys all with me there? Okay. So this is an example of constant, well, different sections. Section A, section B, and section C are all constant velocity, but there are three different velocities. Now, let's ask ourselves this next question. What is the average velocity over 9 seconds? So let's create a little bit more room here and say, hey, what's the average velocity over 9 seconds? So to do this, we could say, go back to the definition of velocity and you say, hey, delta D over delta T. What's our delta D? Well, that's final minus initial. Okay. What's our final position at 9 seconds? Oh, it's 0. So we could just say here 0 minus our initial position is here, 0 divided by 9 seconds. Well, that's 0 meters per second. Our average velocity over the 9 second interval was 0 meters per second. V average over 9 seconds. However, our instantaneous velocity here is, you know, all along this section B, is all zero, but section A, anywhere in, at point in time here, it's always going to be positive 5, and anywhere along here, section C, it's going to be negative 5. So you see there's a difference between instantaneous velocity and average velocity. Okay, so from this graph that we've created already from our dis previous discussion, we have the three sections, A, B, and C. And the numbers are all the same, 15, 3, 6, 9. It might not, this might not look perfect here, but it doesn't really matter. Our objective here is to try and get the velocity graph from the position graph. Okay? Now, for section A, we know that the velocity anywhere along here is 5. So we can choose a point here at 5 and draw a horizontal line. Now, why horizontal? Because the velocity is not changing. It's the same here, anywhere along this line, it's the same. So that means we have a constant velocity. And that's what this motion is. It's constant velocity for each section. And now for this section, B, our velocity is 0. So we'll start here, and we'll go along the origin. Okay, I'm kind of making the line thicker, but it's along 0. 
up until this point. And then here, section C, our velocity is in fact negative 5 anywhere in this time interval. So we could come down here and go negative 5. And now we'll come over here and start here and go like that. Now I don't know if that's perfectly horizontal. Let me try that again. There. So um, notice that it's you kind of might ask, okay, what happens between here and here? Are they connected? Uh, at this point, we have kind of like an instantaneous velocity change. Now that's not really what happens in real life. Um, but for all intents and purposes for our physics course, we can, uh, we can say that this is sufficient. In reality, this wouldn't be an instantaneous velocity change. We'd have to have acceleration here uh, changing from a positive 5 to 0, which means we're slowing down. And we'll, we'll learn about acceleration a bit later. But for now, we'll say, OK, this is sufficient. We should actually write down the times here. This is 3 and this is 6. I'm going to put a dotted line here, and I'm going to put a dotted line here. Um, and let's also, we can put a dotted line down here. W so let's kind of focus in on what we know about the relationship about these two graphs. For one thing, I can say that the slope, let's write it down here, the slope of the d versus t graph is the velocity. The slope of the d versus t is the velocity. Okay? So in other words, the slope here was, section A was 5. The slope here was 0. And the slope here was negative 5 meters per second. And that corresponds to the velocity graph of it 5 here. 0 here and negative 5 here in section C. That means there's a relationship where the slope of the first graph, the dt graph, is equal to the value of the vt graph. Okay? So we can say slope up here equals the value in the VT graph. Okay, Take a moment to digest that because now we're going to go the opposite direction. Okay, Is there anything about this graph, the VT graph, that we could somehow um, discover information about the dt graph above. Well, the opposite is true, right? That means the value in the vt graph is the slope, if you go back, of the dt graph. So the value here, if it's 5, that means the slope up here is going to be 5. If the value is 0, that means the slope is 0 in section B. If the value is negative 5 for the velocity, that means the slope for the dt graph is going to be negative 5. Now, is that the only type of information that we can relate these two graphs, specifically from going from the bottom graph to the top graph? I want you to think about it for a moment. Okay, so the other piece of information that is really interesting and important for us to recognize here is that if we look at the VT graph, by the way, this is nine seconds here, then if we consider 
the area under the VT graph, so this area here, that's a rectangle. And we know that the area of a rectangle is width times height. So this is 3 times 5, which is 15. That means I know that after 3 seconds, my position on the, on the graph above here should be at 15 meters position. Also notice when I'm multiplying the width times the height, the width is seconds and the height is meters per second. And when I multiply meters per second by seconds, I get meters, right? So the units do work out. But also, let's say, for example, if I was to take at 1.5 seconds, well, that's just 1.5 times 5, and so that would be 7.5. So that's where I'd be here. Do you understand that, in fact, I'm actually just employing this, and I'm multiplying velocity with time to get my final position. But in, in a sense though, for a constant velocity here, this is simply working out to be the area under the graph, which is a rectangle. At four seconds here, I don't have any extra area under the graph because my velocity is zero, so I'm still at 15 seconds. At nine seconds, now you might ask, hmm, what's my total area under the graph? Well, this area is also 15, but there's a difference. Because it's below the origin, or zero, we consider areas above zero to be a positive area, and areas below the zero to be a negative area. Therefore, the total area after nine seconds would be positive 15 plus a negative 15, which is going to give us a zero. So that means our location after nine seconds is zero. And in fact, that's correct. We can see that there. Now, how is this, how can we uh, write this down as a statement? So we could say that the area of the V versus T is the uh, position of the D versus T. Okay? So if I um, kind of pull this over and I could say in this, in this case I could go, I could put an arrow like this and I could say area here is equal to position here. So this really gives us a really interesting relationship between these two graphs where slope of this graph here going down equals the value of the VT graph. And the value of the VT graph equals the slope of the graph above. And the area of the VT graph gives us the location or the position of the DT graph. And knowing these, this information, we can then draw the one graph from the other, as long as we know the initial position. As long as, because, because honestly, like, if we, were given only this graph, the only piece of information missing would be the initial position. Once we know the initial position, we could then do it. Because the reason I say that is um, the VT graph would look exactly the same. Let's say, for example, if I had the the DT and I started here and I went I did this and I did this and I did this oops not that last part uh, 
there, that's better. So in this case, it's the same graph, it's just my initial position instead of, let's say, being uh, zero, let's say it was 10, okay? And in this case, let's say it went up another 15, so, you know, uh, 25, but the times are still the same. We still, we're still at three seconds, six seconds, and then uh, nine seconds. So the VT graph in this case would look exactly the same. We'd still have the same velocities, but the only thing difference, the only difference would be that the initial position now would be 10. And in fact, um, we could still we could still um, we could still figure all that out if we had the initial position of of the of the dt graph. Okay. So here is a dt graph. Take a moment now and see if you can figure out the graph of what the vt graph looks like from this one with all the correct times and values. So draw the VT graph from the DT graph. Give it a shot. All right, let's take a look at the solution for this problem. We'll draw our vertical line here. And here is our velocity. Now notice the section, we'll cut this again into sections A, B, and C. For section A, we have a change of negative 10 over 5. So that means our slope is going to be negative 10 divided by 5 for section A. That's, ne that's negative 2. For section B, our slope is 0. You can see that it's a horizontal line. And finally, for section C, our slope is uh, a drop of 8, negative 8, divided by a time of 4 seconds, or 14 minus 10. And again, um, this is going to give us a negative 2 slope. Um, now we can draw this if we start here we're gonna have negative 2 right there and so we're gonna have a constant velocity from 0 to 5 seconds and then we have our velocity continues here now just just to be clear here, okay, uh, let me see if I can change colors for them. So in reality, we can never have an instantaneous velocity change from negative 2 to 0 all of a sudden at this point here. What would really happen is we'd have to have acceleration in a curving line. But since we're not studying acceleration at this point, same thing would happen here at this point as well. We'd have to have a curve that would introduce acceleration into it. We can't have an instantaneous velocity change. However, because we're only studying constant velocity at this point, we're just going to assume that the velocity changes from negative 2 to 0. Uh, at that instant, okay? We'll, uh, we'll study acceleration later. So essentially now my, my velocity for, from five to 10 seconds is going to be zero. I'm just making the line thick so it's visible. And there it is. And then again, from 10 seconds to 14 seconds, we're back down to negative two and well, trying to make that horizontal there and there it is now it doesn't really go all over here it kind of stops there but there you go now in terms of our areas this area and this area 
what do we have here? Well, this is 5, and this is 10, and this is 14. What's our total area for this? Well, this area is negative 10, because it's negative 2 times 5. And this area is uh, negative 2 times 4, because four, ten, from 10 to 14 is 4. So that's negative 8. So if we were to add those up, negative 10 plus negative 8, we're going to get a total of negative 18. That means that our total displacement, that means our, okay, so if I write down displacement, delta D for the graph above is going to be negative 18. Now, that does not tell us where our initial position was. That needs to be provided. In other words, this number, the positive 20, that we cannot f determine from the VT graph. That is impossible to determine from this. This 20 needs to be provided, it needs to be given, in order for us to deterministically draw the DT graph. However, once we have this 20, now we can say, haha, it must end up at 20 minus 18, which is 2. We know that because if we, if we write down the equation, right, um, we say df equ equals, or I could just say, how about this? I say delta d equals, oops. df minus di. Now I know that my delta d has to be negative 18 and I know my initial position is uh, 20. Okay? So therefore I know that my final position so I know that my final position must be 2. 2 minus 20 is negative 18. So my final position here, df is a 2, and my initial position here was a 20. And, and the delta, final minus initial, is negative 18. So I lost 18 uh, meters. So I started away from the origin, and then I moved towards the origin, moving backwards and that's the solution. Okay, so the one thing which we have not discussed yet at this point is describing the motion. So let's take a look at this example here and let's see if we can uh, describe what the motion looks like. So if I have my um, position, let's say this is this is zero or I don't actually this, this isn't really a graph so let's maybe take out the um, horizontal okay and um, let's say that this is position zero then this starts at time zero over here so this person would be here I'm not, I'm not gonna draw a stick figure every time but let's just say at this point we're at uh, 20 meters and this is positive then the person or whatever this object is car I don't it doesn't really matter they're going to be moving backwards for five seconds so they're moving backwards for five seconds until they get to the 10 and then they're going to be waiting here at the 10 meter mark for another five seconds and then after that point in time, they're going to be moving again backwards, again at 2 meters per second, going backwards, for another 4 seconds. And then they're going to end up here. And that's going to be at the location of 2 meters. So essentially, 
moving backwards for five seconds, wait here for five seconds, and then move backwards again for another four seconds until you get to the two meter mark. And that's, that's this graph. Please understand though that at time zero, since the slope is already negative two, uh, we're, we don't assume that we start at this point from zero velocity. We assume that this person's running backwards, but they've, they're already running backwards before they get to the 20 meter mark because at that point in time, at zero seconds, they have to already be moving backwards at two meters per second. Okay? Well, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.